This is The Ash Coomer Show. Check out our interviews to help you become a better entrepreneur, hustler, and all-around life hacker. Every episode will feature an interview or perspective from someone who has been there, done that. Thanks for tuning in. Hey guys, what's going on? This is Ash Kumra. Today's guest is a thought leader, serial entrepreneur, and someone who really understands where cannabis entrepreneurship is going. For those who did not listen to my episode last week, I am continuing to talk about opportunities where politics and entrepreneurship merge from a nonpartisan standpoint. And one of the topics that I have gotten from many of you and something that's also of personal interest to me, not only just from the bigger opportunity, but also because I live in the state of California, is this whole cannabis entrepreneurship. And what do I mean by that? Well, November 8th, when the elections or near then when the laws got passed for California, there was a law that basically allowed various forms of selling, promoting, and creating products around medical marijuana, cannabis, and all those types of products legally in the state of California. And my guest is Eric Rice, and he, among many things, I mean, he's just a rock star. He's been a serial entrepreneur. Um, His his LinkedIn is just insane. He's driven millions of dollars in sales. He's driven millions of visitors to websites. He's launched insane products. He's been on, he's had his own TV and radio show. He's even been involved in NASDAQ. But the reason why I want him on this show is because he is actually the co-founder of a product called Quanta, which provides the cleanest experience in the cannabis market. And I'll let him talk more about it. But the thing that caught me on to him was the fact that Quanta has been called the Tesla of cannabis, and that's going to be an interesting conversation. So, Eric, welcome to the show. How are you doing, man? Thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. No problem. So, Eric, um, before we dive into the ramifications of what's been going on in California specifically, why are you interested in uh, medical marijuana, cannabis entrepreneurship, all the above? Uh, two reasons. Um, I, I'm interested in all of the above. Uh, our CBD product is very much a medical pharmaceutical style uh, product, and I'm really interested in the recreational side, uh, not just because of the fact that I'm a consumer of the product and have been for a long time, um, but because it's it's literally the largest market this country will see, has seen in 100 years, and will see for another 100 years. So um, I, in my opinion, the thing that we are serving, we are serving the non-stoner community. We are serving people like us who run companies, who uh, manage medical practices, who have law practices, this is cannabis for them, which is why kind of people call it the Tesla because of its its cleanliness and, and lack of side effects. Okay, so dive deeper. This is your this is your time to talk about it. So disclaimer for anyone who's hearing this show, I have no affiliation with any of the ventures that Eric does. And so um, Eric is speaking on his own free will. There's no backhand incentive for me. I'm not an advisor or anything. So Eric, tell us a little more about this product that you are the co-founder of. Sure, yeah, we, um, we came across a, a medical patent uh, for a, a group of doctors that were using polarization in the cure for HIV and cancer. And uh, they had you know tinkered around with it. And, and obviously from a medical perspective, tried to use it for CBD for some of their patients. And we went to them and realized that, holy cow, this actually could be something that's really innovative in this space. We tried it out and it was amazing. So what our what our, our magical black box does is we take uh, we deal only in concentrates, so no, no flower, no plants. Uh, but in the concentrate space, we put the concentrates in our black box. And what our system does is it uses uh, magnetic frequencies and vibrations to unpair electrons within uh, THC or within CBD, whatever the identified molecule is. And that essentially speeds up and energizes those molecules so that when you ingest our product, you are getting exactly what you want and nothing of what you don't. So the reason people have what we call slap, which is they feel stupid, lazy, anxious, or paranoid when they when they consume cannabis, uh, those don't exist with us. The reason that they exist with everyone else is the fact that uh, your cannabinoid receptors are taking in literally everything that you just inhaled as opposed to you know, filling the musical chair voids with with just THC or just CBD to get that clean experience. Okay, I'm gonna try to draw a parallel because you went a little Tony Stark geeky on me for a second. <laughs> I, I, I'm a fine wine guy. I've I've learned to dr- develop a fine taste for wine, and I've actually noticed I'm a red wine guy. And at first, I used to be one of those guys. It's like, okay, red wine, it's better for you. It's you know less cal- caloric at times than white wine, and you know it tastes good with certain types of meals. And but now lately, I've been going out and uh, I've been drinking certain brands. I've been serving certain types of quality, especially organic red wine. And I have noticed a non-lethargic, lazy feeling the next morning. In fact, I actually feel a positive side effect and I'm not at all a surgeon general medical doctor or anything of that sort I'm just condoning the fact that I can relate to your experience that 
on the wine end, the higher quality, the more folk, the more less ingredients, but higher quality brings less side effects, i.e. the hangover, i.e. the less, you know, the groggy feeling the next day. Are you saying in a way your product does the same thing in the cannabis sense? Yes. Yeah, we have, uh, we have you know, a thousand people that have, that have uh, tried it and sampled before we uh, went out to market. And, and in, in almost 98% of them, or 99%, uh, said also the same thing. There's no anxiety, no paranoia. Those were two really big things to uh, overcome for people who, you know, aren't, aren't cannabis users. A lot of people don't use it either because of the legality issue or anxiety or paranoia. So we got rid of those two. And then uh, the tired or the or the um, cognitive dysfunction where you feel stupid, uh, those were all major obstacles for people. And we told ourselves early on in cannabis that we wanted to find a product that does that. And unfortunately, you can't find one, you have to make one. So we applied some science to it. And yeah, same kind of thing. There's no hangover in the morning. There's no, uh, you're not going to take this up and get rocked. We always say that it gets you, that our THC product gets you high, not stoned, so you don't feel dumb. Uh, and our CBD product works I mean, for for me and for most of the uh, patients that we've 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 sampled this with. Uh, it works about three to four times better than an ibuprofen, faster, more efficient, and and literally you can feel it, which is crazy. How did you get involved with this patent? I mean, you said you had a you found a patent and like where tell us that the past or the the story behind all that, if you don't mind. Yeah. So um, so as as an entrepreneur and investor, advisor, consultant for all these years, um, I, I get a slew of crazy deals that come into my fall into my lap on a on literally on a daily and weekly basis. And one of them came from a friend of mine who's in special forces. And I said, that's kind of strange. A special forces guy wants to introduce me to some doctors. And uh, and I said, why is that? Why are you making the intro? And he said, well, we're being paid to guard them. And I said, what well, really? And he said, yes, the, uh, the the docs have have some real substantial evidence in their uh, their product and 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 big pharma. Uh, is a scary thing to to their their attorneys, so they hired some special forces guys to guard them. Uh, once we met them, we understood the the, the business, the patent, the model, um, and and took it from there. But in, in essence, the, the background story is you know we were, we were we have a lot of contacts, a lot of friends, know a lot of people, and crazy things fall into my lap, literally just crazy. And this was one of them, and we vet through all of them, and any of them that have substance, we 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 try to move forward with and productize. Okay, no, that, that's that's fair enough. You're a manifester, Mr. Law of Attraction, and I think any successful entrepreneur just has that mentality. So, Eric, let's talk a little more on the macro levels. In November, a very prominent law got passed in the state of California, and for this interview, let's just focus on the state of California. Let's not go beyond that. Tell us why that law was a big deal for people involved in cannabis, medical marijuana, anything of the sort, pretty much what you do in a sense. Sure, yeah, Prop 64 passed in California, which essentially allows for recreational uh, cannabis use, very similar to what's going on in, in Denver and Washington, uh, or Colorado and Washington. And this, this law, it was inevitable. I mean, let's just call it what it is, it's inevitable. But if you want some interesting politics and business behind this, I can explain. Yeah why it took so long to get this approved here. So in California, we have some of the highest level, um, you know, botanists and, and, and growers in the world. We also have some of the most fertile land on planet Earth. So product has always moved from California very quickly in the black markets. Well, as medical came in and now recreational in some states, one thing has been noticed by every person in the industry who pays attention is the fact that the price per pound of, of plant a flower is dropping significantly so the more people who can grow are growing and it's 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 commoditizing uh, something that once was you know illegal so the this is no this is no fact but this is very strong opinion based on facts uh, in our opinion the last time that this was voted down four years ago uh, it was voted down because the uh, the the people lobbying against the legalization of recreational in California were funded by the growers <laughs> They did not want the recreational and legal stuff to hit because it's going to absolutely lower lower the price per pound that they sell their product for. Um, so it's a very long struggle. The the you know the the, the growers are, are absolutely on board at this point because they've seen that there are economics around it that won't hurt them, um, and they've been proven elsewhere. So this is a big thing, not really just for the cannabis industry. This is a big thing for many industries. So if you look at cannabis and what it feeds, um, each one of those industries is going to have a boom. Um, there's the funny things that I could say, like, uh, you know, Frito-Lays, Cheetos, uh, Funyuns, and restaurants will go up in sales. But we also have the the opposite, where people are using the stuff in more health-oriented manners. So massage parlors can sell, if they have the right licensing, they can sell it. Smoke shops, which are getting destroyed in California since they just raised the age from 18 to 21. Uh, we know for a fact in San Fernando Valley, outside of uh, Los Angeles, 552 smoke and vape shops, every one of them lost on average of 40% of their income. So as recreational comes about, they'll be able to sell cannabis in those shops and it'll, it will re revitalize many underlying communities and, and, and keep jobs where they need to be. 
Okay, so if you weren't doing Quanta right now, or outside of Quanta, if you are doing other stuff in the cannabis industry, I mean, this audience is for early stage entrepreneurs and people who want to find a, an opportunity because they're they're just searching for the opportunities. They're hustlers and they're saying, okay, I'm hearing you, Eric. I heard this law is huge. What areas in medical cannabis, specifically in California, should one get into? Uh, well, which ones are the rackets? Uh, <laughs> the uh, good and bad. Yeah, this is a nonpartisan free flow talk. So say whatever you feel. Certainly. Um, so yeah, we are we are involved in other things in our group here. We're 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 actually um, uh, taking ownership in uh, as many as twelve dispensaries here in Southern California. Um, to get into the space right now, the place that I would look, the dispensary market is pretty dried up. That's a capital, really capital intensive business. It's a storefront, um, and and the cannabis industry is crazy because. Aside from the fact that you can't open a bank account, write off any expenses or market your product and you may be arrested at any time, it's just like any other business. <laughs> and you can't use credit cards with your customers. There's a lot, of, a lot of faults in this marketplace. So the dispensary side, really expensive, pays off. It's really, but you, you should have some sort of underlying incentive with it where you're building a brand or a network. Uh, the two places in California for opportunities for businesses in directly in cannabis that I would, I would, I think are going to be really premium pricing are, are two areas, transportation and, and lab testing. So Beginning in 2018, in order to sell your product recreationally, um, you have to you, you cannot transport your own stuff. You have to hire a transportation company to drive your product to a lab that you, you pay both of those companies. Uh, the lab tests it and signs off, and then the lab has to give it to your transportation company again, who you pay, who drives it over to your distributor, who takes it one by one to your retail locations. So in my opinion, in cannabis directly, the two best places in California to get into are lab testing, and there's very few licenses. Uh, lab testing and transportation. Those two things are literally free money. They are just charging people to move something to from one building to another and to, to approve that it is what it is. Uh, simple business is very high margin. Okay. Outside of cannabis, yes. education, number one. So I've been working with uh, you know folks like your audience out there, early stage entrepreneurs yep. for 15 years. Love it. I love the energy. Um, the hustlers in the space, just like in the gold rush of it, it, early, you know, earlier in the uh, last century, two centuries ago, the gold rush, the, the, the major purveyors of the people who profited the most from the gold, from the original California gold rush were not the people mining gold. They were the ones who, owned, who, who licensed and sold picks and shovels and owned uh, hotels and restaurants. Those are the areas that really, really uh, see an uptick. So things that collide with cannabis. What does the cannabis industry need? Um, you know, this is a, a market of formerly black market, now gray market entrepreneurs that not of any fault of their own, they're very inexperienced in the real business world. So entrepreneurs who have real world business experience should be looking to team up with cannabis entrepreneurs because they need they need that structure. They need real entrepreneurship and the ability to blend in with a, a white market. Um, but then there's, of course, the education piece, like friends of ours over at Cannabis Career Institute, what they do, teaching people how to get into the industry and do it right, do it effectively. Uh, the jobs market, I would get into, you know, finding people jobs in the cannabis industry. That's not necessarily a cannabis industry career, but it's an offset. Um, accounting firms, law firms specializing in these areas. These are the guys who are going to get big booms in, in, in clientele. And, and that's where I'd stick if I were an entrepreneur, somewhere very simple that I can do something really great, provide value and make some money. You know, I love what you said about the service providers, uh, accountants and lawyers. And, and I want to dive into the drivers in a second. But the thing that's interesting is that um, so one of my ventures, Youngry, did a equity crowdfunding campaign. And we worked heavily with lawyers and accountants because we were one of the first kind of title three reg cf deals for a you know around the time from a media standpoint we launched in um you know the summer of this 2016 and what was fascinating was how much work the lawyers and accountants were getting not just from us but from all these other companies and now i have a buddy who's, who's our accountant who's like i'm slammed with all these you know equity crowdfunding accounting type of deals and it's because not a lot of accountants are either familiar with equity crowdfunding regulation rules or they're just scared of it or we're just a little more maverick and and when you talk about the the accounting and legal side, it just reminds me of that gold rush opportunity. So I can connect with you on a different level on that. Uh, Eric, I'm just curious, when you talk about the driver's part, are you saying there needs to be a Uber? And I don't I don't like to always use similarities because, you know, Uber's Uber, but it, it is a name that we all are familiar with for this example. Is there needs to be like an Uber for cannabis delivery? Aren't there products like that out there? Or am I missing something? Yes, uh, friends of mine started a company called Ease and they do. They are the Uber of uh, cannabis delivery. Now they are technically a technology company and they have independent operators that carry whatever products they want for, from the legal standpoint. Because I'm gonna talk about lawyers and mention that because uh, in my opinion, this country needs to just dump half of them and get them real jobs. Um, because they hold up business and, 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 and halt innovation. Uh, but yes, there are delivery services that will deliver to your house that way. 
in 2018, transportation is far different than delivery. Uh, these are all licensing categories. So uh, the transportation license is literally the company that, uh, say we make Quanta and we've got a crate of Quanta and we need to have it. What do we do with it after we you know, fill, the, fill the cartridges? We call a transportation company who's licensed and, and, and accredited through the, through the state, pay them some money. They drive it to whatever town has a lab in it. I pay the lab. They test my stuff, tell me that my stuff is exactly what I thought it was anyway, but I had to pay them for it. Then I have to hire the same guy who drove it to the lab to drive it to my distributor, who then gives it to his salespeople and operations people, and they take it to individual retail locations. This is very similar to alcohol. This is exactly how the alcohol industry works. And to be frank with you, the, the comparisons to alcohol and uh, cannabis run pretty deep. Uh, but in the reality, the scope of things, the way it should be, uh, not at all. I mean, ask anybody who started an alcohol brand how difficult it is to get in. It, it, it eliminates entrepreneurship when you have big, restrictive, heavy uh, you know, tariffs and taxes to move your product. Wow. Th no, that, that, that makes so much sense. Eric, I got to tell you, man, you are a smart you know what? I mean, the fact that you're so in this stuff already, I really have to applaud you because I've, I've seen from an outsider standpoint, um, just covering cannabis entrepreneurship, but this is like so knowledgeable and, um, God, I need to pick your brain further. I'm, I'm going to use your brain. What are some other opportunities? Sure. We talked about labs, go deeper into that. Cause there are doctors out there. There are people that have facilities to commercial. Actually, this is an opportunity for commercial real estate type people. So yes. tell me more about the labs part. Um, yeah. So, so commercial, commercial real estate, by the way, for sure, the, the least bad market for commercial real estate is huge because most traditional landlords won't rent to a cannabis company because they think they're going to get arrested regardless if they have a license or not. Uh, the feds haven't done anything in years, and I don't think they will because there's too much money involved. Um, but other the, the lab itself, the lab is pretty simple. The lab literally has to have a license and a building and the ability to test cannabis. Now, that's, that's how it's written, to test cannabis. They don't say for what. Uh, they don't say for pesticides or, uh, you know, uh, acidic breakdown, nothing. They just say test. Uh, our assumption is that since it's been illegal and there are no real research studies on this stuff, uh, that their testing will be THC levels and maybe pesticides. Um, every single extractor in the known universe has this equipment already and can test and verify and, and certify with videotape that their product is what it is. This is literally, like you said before, the the lawyers, in, in, in the end, when, when a law changes, there's one guarantee. Lawyers will make more money. Doesn't matter at what side of the fence they're on. They're gonna, they change cannabis. The guys who are making the most are these cannabis you know, attorneys. Our attorney is awesome. She's been in cannabis for 10 years and criminal defense, all that kind of stuff. But most of these guys are like uh, middle age, you know, middle, middle of the road uh, associates at some other law firm. They weren't hacking it in corporate law. So now they're cannabis corporate law and it's, it, it goes on and on. I mean, the, the, the scams and shakedowns in, in that space are, are, are abundant. As you can tell, I'm pro-entrepreneur. <laughs> no, I, I love that. And um, let's get a little political for a second here in a nonpartisan way. So as of this interview, there's some interesting uh, policies that are either launched or going to be launched from, um, from our President Trump all the way down. How will this affect um, the cannabis entrepreneurship industry? Give me a nonpartisan answer. Will it affect it job-wise, immigration-wise, or, or this side is not affected by it? Well, the um, it's it's a it's a good it's a good question, and no one knows the answer. But uh, I had a conversation about this last night with some very famous people who are, who are sampling our product and loved it. And the answer to me was is, is pretty simple. From a nonpartisan perspective, uh, if they were to say, okay, this is now now the states can't make their own decisions, and, and the Fed's going to come in and take over. In we're talking about just California. Uh, if this were to happen in California, with how much groundwork has been laid, how much activism has been has taken place and been funded if the feds were to come in and mess this up i'm 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 pretty certain because i know a ton of people in politics that at, there would at least be a filing for the state of california to separate from the united states i mean it's it's that big of an industry and it's pro already providing that many jobs when there's really no defined uh market yet or defined uh rules so it's that big i mean it literally is that big of a market so what i think will happen is is trump's already said uh, I'm going to leave it state by state. It's your state. It's your plants. You figure out what to do with it. Uh, in the state of California, a lot of the regime changes that are taking place uh, due to the, the last election, <coughs> excuse me, are all very favorable uh, to the cannabis industry, especially since we're starting to see more and more real traditional entrepreneurs who speak the language of business and understand, yes, that's the man. 
And we don't like the man, but we have to know how to get a deal done with the man. So now that we're starting to see these people integrating into the space, you're going to start seeing laws getting more and more relaxed on, on the business side, uh, which sounds sounds loony, but right now they can't get tighter uh, or, or nebu more nebulous. Um, they, it'll be a little bit easier to get into the space from a product perspective. It'll be very difficult to get into the space from a, a brick and mortar or testings or any of these big licenses. They're going to be very, very rare. Um, but what you'll see in the space is jobs coming from everywhere. We work with three groups right now that um, with a deal we're putting together with them to get into California, uh, they're estimating that they can put 500 to 700 uh, veterans to work just in Southern California in the cannabis industry by the end of the year. Um, these types of, of movements are occurring. This is li literally, this is a plant that the side bad effects of it are that you're going to maybe eat some stuff, which also is a myth. Cannabis users have four inch smaller waists and consume 600 calories a day more than the average bear. So THC actually makes you skinnier, breaks down, uh, breaks down com complex carbohydrates. But that's what people think. There's a bunch of fat, lazy stoners out there. Uh, when in reality, it's, it's the new wine. It, mm. it literally is. I mean, I have been to so many parties in L.A., some of the wealthiest people in the city, and there are more people using vaporizer pens with cannabis in it than there are drinking alcohol. And those nights are inevitably more fun, and they don't suck as much in the morning. Oh, hey, you have less drunk driving accidents. That's a fact. For, yeah, the interesting thing with in any of the states that have a cannabis medical or recreational uh, rule set, they've noticed two major things. In those states with some sort of cannabis uh, laws in place and the ability to sell at least medically, uh, they've noticed two things. Number one, a significant drop in drunk driving accidents. Significant. They, they haven't released the numbers, they've said significant. But each state has had anywhere between two and 6% drop in obesity. That I think is, people have not seen this this plant as a health product. In the next five years, they certainly will. If you know, we, we, uh, we have enough marketing firepower coming out that we can help with that, that movement. But this is a, a healthy preventative medicine plant. And one of the molecules in it makes you, makes you laugh and you know, sometimes makes you hungry. <laughs> that's it so the, the so does alcohol it, too and you can argue that and look how big alcohol is and that's legal so well it, the, the the fact that it's illegal so so i won't get too deep into politics but people talking about trump i had a conversation last night and i said listen uh my kid got upset because i busted him lying about eating a sucker he's seven years old he said he didn't eat it he stood up on the couch and was stuck to his butt so there's no way he wasn't eating it when i walked in the room went in his room cried said my life sucks i hate it da 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 da, da. and it just this kid has everything in the world, you know what I mean? Like he has a room full of toys, you know, great life. He's complaining about a sucker, said his life sucks. So I typed in kids in Syria on Google Images and showed him how the other kids on the other side of the world live. That kid's missing a foot. Look at his building, look at his house full of bullet holes and bombs. And, and you know, he got it. And inevitably, that side of the world and our side of the world are going to clash. That's going to happen. There's no way around that. And, you know, support or don't, I don't, I am completely independent. I did not vote because both of them suck. Uh, but all this radical stuff that's happening with Trump, it's radical to us because it's breaking the norm. And the norm that you, the United States has as an opinion, we're, we're becoming very, very soft, much like the end of the Greek and the end of the Roman empires. So I think it's okay to shake things up a little bit. But more importantly, uh, it is absolutely paramount that something like this, because we are the largest you know, creators in the world of cannabis, has a global market. And if anyone can do that, it's probably going to be the guys that's in office right now to wow. create a global market. Okay. Well, uh, my last question for you, and first off, I want to, I wonder you want to share my appreciation for this. And thank you, Vince Vitale with Younger for uh, connecting us. This was a very extensive overview on why cannabis entrepreneurship is something that people need to be aware of, especially in the state of California. This is exactly why we do this type of show. And so thank you for that. My last question is, what can people do in the state of California to, um, you know, just spread the education of cannabis entrepreneurship? Because clearly they're going to hear this interview. Clearly people need to talk about it. What, what, what can we do? Uh, well, number one, we're doing something kind of original. Uh, one of our campaigns that we have coming out on social media in the next month, uh, it will shock you, uh, but it will release the names, credentials, and resume of a bunch of people that probably everyone on this call know. And they're going to be telling the world that they've been using cannabis for 20 years and 30 years. They used it while they were in the NFL. Um, and that the people who are using this product inevitably act responsibly unless they're you know in their teens or 20s um and that this is something that uh, here's another stat that just came out from the washington post is that now today middle-aged parents are actually more likely to smoke weed than their teenage children this is not a kid's product this is not 
This is not uh, binge drinking in college underage. The, the market itself, the, the 90% beyond the stoners, these are everyday people who, have, who experience cognitive overload, uh, massive amounts of stress. Those two things alone, I mean, think about how bombarded we are with content and information. It clouds our brain. A plant like this has an inherent mechanism that allows people to instantly de-stress and, and, and relieve themselves of so many worries, if nothing more than for an hour or two. Uh, I can't think of anything in this day and age from a, from a medical standpoint that's more important than people's brains. You know, our brains have not gotten smarter. Brains have not experienced Moore's Law. Moore's Law has experienced Moore's Law, which means that our little brains that are still 55 years ago now have this influx of information that's literally causing all of us to make bad decisions or to make no decisions in areas that are very important. That's the thing people should understand. You know? Okay. Okay. Well, amazing. Well, Eric, uh, we're running out of time here. Last thing, where can people find you? Uh, right now, you can go to quanta9.com, and that'll take you there uh, about our product. Or in the next uh, next week or so, you can go to bioanomaly.com. Uh, it's a complete health and wellness. Um, you know, it's the cutting edge stuff we're, we're, we're releasing and talking about. So it's very cool updates to get. Okay. Sounds like a plan. And you can find me on Twitter. I'm on EA underscore Rice at Twitter. So. Perfect. Well, thank you again, Eric. You bet. Thank you so much, Ash. I appreciate it. I love what you're doing. And I had a ton of fun at the uh, Youngry launch party. I think Youngry is going to be one of, the, one of the most beneficial vehicles for young entrepreneurs out there. So thank you for all of your effort and what you do there. I appreciate that. Thank you again for tuning in. If there's anything we can do to help you out, email ash at youngry.com, A-S-H at youngry.com. The best way to reach us. Also check out more episodes on ashcoomer.com or on our iTunes page. This is the entrepreneur generation, so let's make it together.